Thank you for joining us for our Grand Rounds Lecture Series, where we get to talk with experts in the field of child and adolescent psychiatry. We have the pleasure of having Dr. David Henry Feldman, and he's a professor and director of the Developmental Science Group at the Elliott Pearson Department of Child Development at Tufts University. Thank you for joining us. You gave an, an, an interesting talk about child prodigies and you know, in child and adolescent psychiatry and psychology, we tend to focus on more of the disruptive end of things and when things aren't going so well. So why is it important to study child prodigies? One of the things about the prodigy situation in the extreme form that I tend to study it is that it's an almost uncanny situation of things going right. And one of the ways that you can learn more about how things go wrong is by understanding how things go right. It's not that you would want all kids to be child prodigies, that's out of the question, but when you understand all of the things that have to go right in order to get one, then you begin to understand a little more about this going a little bit wrong or that going a little bit wrong and how that can send a process veering off in one direction or another, which then sometimes do come into your office. That's true, that's interesting. So you, you talked about the recipe for success for child prodigies and their families. Tell us how parents of regular kids can use a similar recipe for their own success. I wouldn't recommend that, that parents of all the other um, kids we have be raised the same way that prodigies are raised. It probably wouldn't work well and it's really not the point. The point is that the prodigies if things go well are raised in the way they have to be. But the same is true for every one of our children. For things to go as they should, they have to be raised well. But raised well doesn't mean doing what you do with the prodigy. Because the prodigy tends to be extremely focused on one single thing, finds his or her challenges and satisfactions through it, is able to, has the talent, to be able to really do it well and that the parents find ways to bring to that process what it needs as well as to make sure that the child is okay in every other way. But that's not the way it goes with most other kids. So the parenting challenge is, it's still the same challenge. You want to do for your child what's going to make it possible for her or him to be everything they can be. But we all can't be the same thing. So the extra challenge that we all, all the rest of us have that the prodigy parents don't have is you don't know what your child is going to be most of the time. You're making guesses and trying to think this is something that you would want to help develop but or maybe this is something you might want to discourage but it's you're guessing. What can you use um, to make guesses? See what child children are interested in see what they like to do, see what they might have some talent at, think about what you might have some talent at, think about what, what things might be uh, available to you, and the, the, all, of, all of those kinds of things we do as parents. So I wouldn't want to use the prodigy parenting paradigm as the one we should all follow. That's really not the point. The point is that for whatever reasons, that one seems to have all fallen into place, including what the parents do for it, with it. And you'd want to see the same with all the rest, but it wouldn't look the same because it wouldn't be for the same kind of kid. That's really useful information. And you mentioned that the research out, you know, that's available um, is really limited in terms of like studying child prodigies. But we do know that uh, a lot can be found by looking at the family tree. One of the things that we found in virtually every case that we've studied, and as you say, we're not talking about a great number of cases, there's a lot more work to be done here, but it pretty much without fail that if you find a prodigy, you find prodigies in the family tree more often than not on both sides. And the further back you can, you can go in that process, the more information you're likely to get. And it can be very helpful. It can help you sort out where the talents might be. It doesn't have to be the same thing, but if you find music going back five generations, not a bad bet. 
that there will be music talent in your children. But sometimes it's in related fields. It's not, not always true that the prodigy's parents are exceptional in the same area. It's sometimes true, the way it seems to work genetically, that it skips generations or it moves laterally across so that it's not your parents, it's your uncle, an aunt, let's say. So you have to be a little um, um, wider than just father, son, mother, daughter, that way. I mean, that's good if you can get it. But you want to look a little bit laterally as well. And more likely than not, that will give you some guidance about what's probably there to work with. Not a guarantee, <laughs> but uh, more often than not. So our parents have worked it, they have to look at those family trees then. <laughs> yes, and, and, and in, in, in many family traditions, that information is available. It may not be used for this purpose, but it, it, it could be, it should be. For many others of us, we don't really know. So it puts us at a bit of a disadvantage and making those kinds of guesses. I tend to believe, though, that when parents have an intuition about something like that, that there's something to it. It doesn't mean that it has to be that. It doesn't mean that it's the only possibility. But I tend to take it pretty seriously. So if you feel that there is an architect you know, in your future, I take that seriously. It was true of Frank Lloyd Wright's mother. She felt she had an architect. That was true before he was born. But, but you have to be right. Thank you for joining us. We learned so much. You're most welcome.